Hello and welcome to Crucible of Words for more dedicated legacy action. Today we are doing our midweek meta deck section and we are playing the legacy challenge winning deck list from the weekend just gone and this is a sneak and show deck list with omniscience. Now the thing that makes this deck list interesting to me isn't so much what's in it but what's not in it. We have no attractors at all which has sort of been the new hotness that a lot of people have been playing and this deck is just going back to a good old four grizzle brand, three emrakul and a couple of Omniscience. So obviously the Omniscience doesn't really work with our sneak attacks, but with our show and tell allows us to hard cast Emrakul, which is lights out whenever you get to do that. So I've broken this deck down into the core section. So we've got our mana base here with a bunch of soul lands, so we can try and go as fast as possible. We've got a bunch of fast mana. We've got six of this, so four petals and a couple of Spirit Guides. Spirit Guide doesn't allow you to make this turn one show and tell from the ancient tombs, but it does let you accelerate your sneak attacks and gives you a red pip to activate your sneak attack with, which is also really useful when you're drawing cards with Grizzlebrand. Then we've got our way of finding our spells. We've got a bunch of Brainstorms, Ponders and Preordains. And then we've got Protection. So you've got one days, four forces and a couple of spell pierce. So pretty streamlined, trying to do our thing, draw a bunch of cards, win the game, cast Emrakul, etc, etc. So we've played show and tell on the channel before. So we're going to try again. Now, you may have noticed there is a single tropical island in the mana base. Now, the reason for this is cyborg cards of two Veil of Summer and one Carpet of Flowers. Now, Carpet of Flowers gives you a whole bunch of mana to accelerate things like Sneak Attack out. But what it can do in a longer game is can get you the mana to hardcast something like a Grizzle Brand, which is not outside the realms of possibility if you're playing against a slow matchup. As the rest of the sideboard, we've got... Uh, Solgai Lantern for a bit of Graveyard Hate, along with two Surge of Extractions. Now these aren't big haymakers, they're just enough to slow your opponent down for a turn or two until we can do our big thing. Then we've got a couple of, uh, sorry, three Pyroblasts. Again, this goes alongside the Veil of Summer to help force our things through. We've got Hydroblast, which is going to be useful against the Mirror when we're trying to stop opposing sneak attacks, as well as just slowing down some of the red decks that can maybe lock us behind certain pieces. And we've got one Magus of the Moon, which I'm not sure how useful it's going to be as a one-off, but we'll see how it pans out. We've got a couple of Meltdown for these artifact decks, and again, decks that are trying to lock us behind things like Pithing Needle or whatever. And we've got two Lightning Bolts to blow up things where they're like Containment Priest or whatever is a bit of a problem for us, so we need to make sure we can get those off the board. That's about it for the deck. We're pretty streamlined, pretty focused on making some giant things and trying to hard cast. I say hard cast, we're trying to Omniscience cast Emrakul and get the trigger from actually casting it. So that's pretty much the deck. I think this has got different protection to the last build I played in terms of the spell pierces here, and we've trimmed down on days. And we've got a couple of Preordain. These sometimes are things like Intuition instead, so we've just got the one mana thing, so a lot of the time this deck's going to want to go turn one, cantrip spell, turn two, make our thing. That's kind of where we're trying to go with this. Obviously we can do turn one things as well, but that's pretty much where we're at. So before we jump into a league with this deck, let me just say likes, comments and subscribers. These are things that I really like and appreciate. I'm getting very close to the 1000 subscribers, which is where you start to get monetized, which would really help me out. So I appreciate everyone who has subscribed so far and welcome new subscribers. Okay, let's jump into a legacy league with the legacy challenge winning sneak and show deck list. We're on the draw. This is our opening hand. We have sneak attack. We have a little bit of acceleration. We have something to put in. We have protection and we have cantrips. The one thing we're really missing here is a bit more mana, but we've got the ability to play an island on turn one to avoid wasteland and then preordain to find lands. Considering lands the most abundant thing in our deck, this seems like a pretty good keep to me. Ideally, we don't want to pop off our force of will unless it's defending the thing we're doing, but should be all right. It's a nice emergency button to have if we need it. Wooded Foothills, this could be something like Nia Depths perhaps. Okay, so this one will go and get ourselves a basic island. Now one problem with Preordain is it does tell our opponent that we're doing something a little bit on the broken side. But I think it's much better to do that there and then use a Brainstorm on the following turn. So we're kind of looking for a soul land so we can try and combo on turn three. If we can put a Grizzle Brand into play, we can draw a bunch of cards, find an Emrakul and a Lotus Petal and then jam something else into play. Another Wooded Foothills from our opponent. Two Wooded Foothills doesn't necessarily give us more information than just the single Wooded Foothills. This could be some sort of Applejacksy type deck, perhaps, but you'd imagine they would have a one drop, whether that's a Hierarch or the Lumberjack or whatever. And it's probably not Elves because 
they would have a turn one drop almost every single time. Not playing anything is interesting. We don't know if blue mana is going to come out of these fetches either, so that's something we're going to have to keep our eye on. So we're always going to be playing a fetch land here, I think. So let's brainstorm. Uh, we will brainstorm now in case we find a ponder. We want to crack it off. Okay, we don't need all these grizzle brands. So we put two of these grizzle brands away. We don't need to crack this now, though. We can crack it in our opponent's turn. So Soul Land is the best draw for us. We have Force of Will blue card in case we need it for anything. But mostly we're going to try and ignore what our opponent's doing. Unless it's something that interacts with what we're up to. Let's crack this now. I'm just trying to clear those two grizzle rounds off the top of our deck. Because we've seen the Besage, we don't want to just hang the sneak attack out there. Unless we can activate it on the same turn. Because we want to be able to make sure we can at least put a grizzle brand in here. So I think we're just getting a Volcanic Island here. So we can play the sneak attack this turn. But I'd rather not just jam it out and hope for the best when we know that we can do it the following turn with force of will protection let's see what our opponents going to be doing at our end step here a bayou okay black mana is interesting that means we should probably be playing around opposition agent i'd imagine they would have done it already if they had it if our opponent taps out we will crack our fetch land there we go and we will have another volcanic so that we've got two red for future sneak attack activations and they're going to target us okay sure we don't particularly care about that. Those cards go on the bottom of our library. For quite some time, embarrassingly, I thought this shuffle cards in rather than putting things on the bottom, which is very different. So our opponent is not giving us a lot of clues about what they are. Because if they were like some sort of Newton Ells build, you'd imagine we'd have seen one or two drops. A Cabal Therapy. Interesting. I think we let this one hit and then Force of Will and if they flash it back. If they name Force of Will. They did name Force of Will. Okay. So they can flash this back and get rid of our sneak attack here. Or our Grizzle Brands. But I don't think it's worth Force of Willing there because they can flash it back and get something else perhaps. The double hit there is a bit annoying. So they're going to name sneak attack here. So this is looking more like some sort of Nick Fit deck but they just didn't have the Veteran Explorer. Okay, they named the Grizzle Brand. Interesting. With a Bloom Apprentice. Oh, okay. That's where we're at, is it? Interesting. So we can play a sneak attack here. We'll play the one with the art that they've already seen. And are they going to have the Chain of Smog to combo us off this turn? They know we don't have Force of Will blue card because they know we have the Simmons Spirit Guide. Chain of Smog. Sure. We're going to let them discard their hand so we can at least see some more cards of their deck. And then we're going to concede. If you're unfamiliar with this combo, the Witherbloom Apprentice drains for one every time you cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell. And if you t target somebody with Chain of Smog, they can copy it for free. And then they target themselves, copy it for free, etc, etc. So we just want to see all the cards. Questing Beast, okay. So this is looking more like a sort of green-black maverick type shell. Okay, so now we've seen all the cards we're going to see. We can scoop it up. Okay, so these Veil of Summers are going to be good to defend us against Discard. The Makes of the Moon might be okay here. I don't think we're in a situation where we want some of these bits and pieces. The Lightning Bolt to stop their combo if it's going to go off before us. This is probably about the only things we're looking for. Now it's a question of sideboarding. I always struggle a little bit to sideboard with these decks because of how tight the space can be. Uh, I'm not... It's, it's an interesting one here because Force of Will can stop their combo, but it's such a liability for us. I'm going to try and sideboard out the Force of Will for the purposes of getting these things in which stop the discard and stop the combo, and it's only a one-for-one one if we do that. Whereas... The Force of Will, if they've got Cabal Therapies, they just put us in a horrible bind if they have Force of Will, if we have Force of Will, and our opponent's still going to play around it. Um, spell Pierce is fine and can counter the Chain of Smog. It can also counter Discard Spells coming our face. I think this is fine. I think if we can just do something really broken on turn one or two, then we're okay here. Okay, we can keep this. We have Veil of Summer and Lightning Bolt. So we have two of our sideboard cards. We can show and tell our Omniscience into play. And we just need to find some sort of cantrips and we're away. And we can't be discarded in the first turn of the game, which is nice. We will play our Misty Rainforest and crack it on turn one in case our opponent has like just basic land or black land, dark ritual into opposition agent. We don't want to get caught by that. So we can play around that for free. We could get a volcanic island so we can hold up. Oh, and actually we kind of need the Veil of Summer here. And they're probably going to know that we've got the Veil of Summer if we get a Tropical Island, actually. So maybe we don't crack the Misty Rainforest straight away. And we sort of hold it for a surprise Veil of Summer that they might not see coming. And we're not in a hurry to crack it 
anyway. So we should be able to play around opposition agent. It's just going to be stronger to choose which of these we use on our first turn. Okay, we've got a swamp here, a cabal therapy. Let's sacrifice this. We're going to get ourselves a tropical island. We're going to cast this, protect ourselves. We don't want our opponent to see what we've got either. Another lightning bolt. So we can brainstorm and hide things if we need to. And we can also access a lightning bolt. And we're just looking for one more land so we can show and tell in our omniscience and hopefully have something else to go with it. Cavern of Souls. Human. Okay. So they might be running the witch and the... The witch makes infinite guys. The other guy just drains you out. So we'll, we'll get a bit of more of an indication of what our opponent is running here. Just this guy straight up. Sure. Interesting. At end step, we're going to cast a brainstorm. Okay. So we have a ponder. I'm certainly interested in that. We want the land... I don't think we're going to need the Spirit Guide. And we don't need two Lightning Bolts here. I don't think we're going to need the Sneak Attack if we've got the Omniscience either. So I think we are getting rid of one of our Sneak Attacks and the Spirit Guide. Although the Spirit Guide does let us activate the Sneak Attack if we wanted that. But I think we're looking at putting this on top and then this. And then it's still at the end of turn, we're going to crack this and just clear this off the board right now. So we're going to get ourselves a Volcanic Island. We will Lightning Bolt this. I'm surprised they didn't immediately hit with the Cabal Therapy there. Maybe they just have the win next turn. They figured their best option here is to race. Okay, so let's see. Can we draw a big monster? We cannot draw a big monster. What we can do is we can ponder first and see if it's, our, if it's worth our while show and telling this turn or not. So I don't hate that. Let's see what we find with the ponder. We found a Grizzle Brand and some... Lotus Petals. We don't need these Lotus Petals, but we want the Grizzle Brands. So we're going to put these on top of our library. Shovel Library, no. Play this out. Cast Show and Tell. Put in on Omniscience. Cast the Grizzle Brand. Draw a bunch of cards. And we're all good. Now they could put something weird in here like Shouldered, which would be a real pain. Okay. Let's cast, uh, let's cast this without paying mana cost. They've conceded from the game. Now we weren't guaranteed to hit something here. But we can effectively draw 14 cards here to find an Emrakul. Or other cantrips that we can then chain into more stuff, etc, etc. So I think that's fine. On the draw, do we want more interaction with our opponent's combo? I think Magus of the Moon is going to be surprisingly good against our opponent a lot of the time. Because they're trying to cast black, green, black, black. So as we saw in the first game, they had a lot of non-basics. I don't think Daze is going to do us a lot of good on the draw. Is it okay to have just this one Megs of the Moon and maybe try and steal a game that way? I think the rest of our plan here is still fine. I don't think we want to go for the Force of Wills here. I don't think that's going to be as good as the other things. Now, Veil of Summers are definitely going to be worse on the draw. But I think we're okay here. So this hand makes a turn to Emrakul. Pretty good. Now, one thing we can do, if we show and tell, we put in Emrakul, they put in the, the guy, and they just untap and kill us. So we probably can't do it until we also have the mana to use our Lightning Bolt. So we're going to keep this hand, and we're probably going to preordain on one, and then possibly we're trying to look at going off on turn three. That does expose us to more discard from our opponent. So there's definitely some pros and cons here. This is probably going to be... Okay, they're going to get a Dryad Arbor. This means if they have Lotus Petals in their deck, they can go off next turn. So maybe we're supposed to hold up the Misty Rainforest here. Like, I think we're just going to hold up Lightning Bolt until we attack them with an Emrakul, pretty much. They could just be going for a double Cabal Therapy turn this turn, which would be quite strong. But let's see where we end up. Cavern of Souls is another reason why I'm not a big fan of having the Force of Wills here. Okay, it looks like we're getting hit by something here. Oh no, this is going for a human spell. No? Okay, change their mind. Green and black. With a Bloom Apprentice. Sure. I think we need to take the hit here. I think, well, we have to get this off the board, so... We will hit this now when they have no mana up. And it frees us up for mana on our turn. So if we draw an Omniscience, then we can just win the game. That would be the best draw here. A Lotus Petal. So this gives us the ability to cast a Preordain to try and find an Omniscience first. So I'm definitely a fan of that. Uh, bottom. Bottom. And we've drawn a Ponder. Now we could try and Ponder for Omniscience or another removal spell. But if they have land with a Bloom... So the three cards in their hand... They have to have three specific cards in their hand to win the game. One of them is a Wither Bloom, one of them is a Chain of Smog, the other one is any land. Is that something that I don't mind? I think we're just supposed to jam here. Like, I, if they have it, they have it. 
I don't think we can play in fear and we can just kill them in one turn cycle. Now, if they get attacked by Enricool, they're going to lose this game. Mind Break Trap. Interesting. Okay, that means the chance of us dying on the next turn are lower and we do have another show and tell. I was not expecting the Mind Break Trap there. But we have another show and tell, so it's not the end of the world for us. A Collector Reef. Okay, that's not an issue for us. Not right now, at least. Uh, so we can either hold up Spell Pierce. Yeah, I think holding up Spell Pierce here is the right play. Let's play this one out. Mm. I think that's going to be better than trying to ponder into Omniscience here. So let's cast this. And we will use the Tropical Island and represent potentially Lightning Bolt. So our opponent has two things to play around. Opposition Agent, sure. So we've got a Spell Pierce, which means if they have Wither Bloom, they, they can't actually have the combo because they need the extra land here. So I think we are relatively locked up for winning this one. Uh, Sudden Edict, if they have that, can kill us here. But if they're casting a human spell, that's fine. Chain of Smog targeting us. Might as well just save our Ponder. They can't attack into our Emrakul. And they're conceding from the game because we're going to remove six of their permanents. So they're going to be hellbent with no permanents in play. And we have a 15 power guy in play. So yeah, that went pretty well. Our opponent had discard rather than... Counter magic, although we did fall into the mind break trap, but I wasn't really expecting that. I guess we could have played around that, but the way we play around that is playing right into it and just using our second show and tell. So even if I had thought about it, our play would have been the same. All right, 1 0, let's go to round two. So we have some good things. We have something that goes with sneak attack, we have something that goes with show and tell, and we have a little bit of defense, and we have some mana here. So we're just looking for sneak attack or show and tell, and we have some mana here. Um, and we have cantrip, so I think this is a keep. It's a little bit slower, potentially, but it could immediately speed up very quickly if we find a show and tell in the top cards of our library. Lava Spike. Understood, opponent. Understood. I see what you're doing. We need to go relatively fast here. Um, do I play around Price of Progress here? I don't think we do. I think we just play out our Volcanic Island. And we'll cast a Ponder. We have a show and tell. Okay, so we'll put... Grizzle Brand on top, then Spell Pierce, and Show and Tell. So this is a turn to Grizzle Brand, potentially into Emrakul. Now we have to be a little bit careful with our life, but we've got so many cantrips here, we can just use these to find stuff. Eidolon of the Great Rebel, sure. Now this guy also has lifelink, so that's not to be snuffed at. Okay, so we can go Show and Tell here, put in our Omniscience, cast this for free. And I think we just could just sit on this 7-7 lifelink because our opponent's going to really struggle to deal us 14 damage this turn, I would imagine. And we have a spell pierce we can fire off if they're going to hit us for something that does more than 2 damage that the Eidolon will do us. We can't attack with this. We don't need to draw any cards here. We can probably just ride the 7-7. Yep, yeah, okay. As expected. So this is a matchup where our Hydroblast looks pretty good. I will take that. The Lightning Bolt for their recursive source of damage seems good too. Other than that, I don't think we want to be two for one ourselves with this Force of Will. I think we're just trying to jam quickly here. But I don't know if we have enough slots here. Maybe we have to keep one Force of Will. And yeah, I guess this is what we're going with here. We just want to go fast because the thing we're doing is better than the thing they're doing. We're obviously in A plus B combo, but we've got a lot of A's and a lot of B's. Whereas their deck is, I string together lands in like seven of my spells and I win the game. So we just need to come out swinging pretty quickly, I would say. Um, turn to Emrakul is pretty good. I'll take that. Now Burn can kind of play around a turn to Emrakul a little bit. Goblin Guard, sure. If we can find another Simian Spirit Guard on top, that'd be lovely. Oh my god, there is another Simian Spirit Guard on top. Okay, we get to turn one Emrakul here. Our opponent's going to be very unhappy about that. Uh, mana, mana, just put in the big squiggly diddly. Our clock is definitely better. I'm not sure what they have in red that can deal with it. Okay, nothing. So we've got the match there in, what, four minutes tops, I think? Three minutes, I think that round took. <laughs> All right, uh, that's burn versus show and tell for you. One of them's going to win very quickly. And I think what we do is just more powerful. There's a reason burn doesn't see a lot of play in Legacy at the moment. But uh, I've had a request to play Burn at some point, so I'm going to see if I can find a way of making Burn work in Legacy. But I think it's a difficult thing to play when you're running things like this that get outclassed by a lot of creatures, and your Burn spells just immediately get blanked if your opponent plays an Uro and just 
gets to pull ahead of you that way. All right, we are 2-0, oh, let's go into round three. This is our opening hand, we're on the draw. We don't have any blue mana to like use our cantrips to fix our hand, so even though we've got a lot of pieces we want, I don't think we can play this hand. This hand is better because we at least have ways of digging into the things we're looking for. I think we can keep this, and what do we bottom here? I think we're probably bottoming... It's either the petal or one of our cantrips. I think we're going to bottom the preordain here. This way, if we find the, the thing we need, we can get there. And obviously, if like if it's um, show and tell, we can turn one, ponder, turn two, show and tell. Now, obviously, if we're against a blue matchup, that's going to be different. And we're going to be pondering and looking for stuff more. So this looks like one of the uh, four-color Zenith decks. It could just be like Maverick with Blue Splash for um, Leovold. Or it could be a Lurin. There's plenty of options it could be. So I think we're going to start out with a Ponder. We don't want any of these. So put any order and shuffle. Sneak attack. Okay. So we have a plan. Um, do we play our Loath's Petal? I think that gives away too much information about what we're playing. I think I'd rather keep it in hand. Our opponent hasn't doesn't look like they're a Thalia deck. Because this was their start. So I think it's better to keep this in hand. And maybe bait our opponent in. Our opponent could be on a Lurin as well. But if we can make it more of a surprise when we go off. That'd be better. If we play a Lotus Petal, our opponent's going to be more inclined to keep their removal rather than develop their board position. Or rather keep their disruption. So we'll see what they've got here. A Tundra. Okay, so we're looking at some sort of Bant thing. This definitely feels like it could be a Lurin. I know uh, Charbel, who we had on the channel for our Lurin video, recently 5-0'd with an Lurin deck. So maybe someone has seen that and gone, oh, I'll have a go on that. They did not shuffle with the Ponder. That's not great for us. They don't necessarily know what they're looking for. Okay interesting so next turn we can go so i think we're going to brainstorm out our opponent's end step to try and find some protection because we'd like to be able to sneak attack and activate and see how we do if you only get to put in one thing we want to put in the emrakul i think i think that's a fairy um i guess we brainstorm in response okay so we have a second sneak attack that's actually very good for us here so i think we'll put the grizzle brown on top and then the Ponder. Okay, so they got four cards in hand. They didn't attack us at all. Interesting. So, then we'll play out the City of Traitors. We'll play out this Lotus Petal so we can play around a Daze, which I don't think is in our opponent's deck. This can hit a misstep as well. Let's cast this. We have a spare one, so we don't mind as much if this gets countered. Because of the Teferian play, it actually works out as better having a second copy than having any protection. Because we can't cast protection right now. Let's see what our opponent's going for. This could be a brainstorm looking for an answer. Or a ponder because they have the Teferi allowing them to cast spells at instant speed. Okay, so here's the ponder looking for an answer, I think. They have exactly six permanents, by the way. Which is a good number of permanents. Okay. So they're going to lose all their permanents here. And the game's going to end. The Emrakul shuffle in, but we have the Grizzle Brand to follow up with. This one's better because if our opponents are luring, this stops them from being able to combo off. Whereas this, we could maybe draw some more cards and hit the mana to put the Emrakul in. But this is just guaranteed to stop our opponent. If we did this and we didn't hit the Emrakul, and we just hit them for seven, they untap and win the game potentially. I do think this is the Alluring build, because I was looking at it earlier today. So, with that in mind, Carpet of Flowers here definitely has some text. Uh, Magus of the Moon is very good against the four-color Alluring decks. Surgical Extraction doesn't actually feel very good. Lightning Bolt can work, though. So I don't think one of the days on the draw. Spell Pierce, they're trying to resolve a four mana spell to win the game with. So I like the Spell Pierce. The issue is they are also trying to resolve Teferi. But Teferi is something that we can hit with this. I think Pyroblast are also pretty good here. I think we're probably looking at... Oh, they go in this pile. I think we can probably board out our forces so we're not trading two for one. So that we don't have to give up combo pieces. And maybe just trim a couple of cantrips here maybe we can maybe we're swapping out one of our petals for a carpet actually or actually one of the simian spirit guys is probably weaker yeah so we can bring back in a preordain because this is just a better petal most of the time all right so we'll give this a go if you're unfamiliar with the alluring combo this particular build is one that uses cavern harpy and the merfolk and a bunch of recruiters so you cycle through the recruiters getting more recruiters then you get your um, Cavern Harpy and the Tidal Merfolk or something. I can't remember what the name of the Merfolk is. Uh, but 
as part of its cost to kick it, you have to bounce a creature, so you can bounce it in a way that your opponent doesn't get to respond to the creature being bounced, which is really good. And then you eventually kill with Parasitic Strix being looped over and over with Cavern Harpy. There are builds that run like the Aserak Arc Lich, but after having done that special guest stream with Charbel, I fully agree with him that the recruiter build that this deck looks like is the better one. This hand is a bit slow, but it has all the mana we need to play a sneak attack. I think we keep this. We're just looking for monsters here, but we've got two cantrips. I think we can keep this. And if we find something, like we might just brainstorm into a good show and tell thing. Although show and tell is kind of a bit dicey because our opponent has a lure in. So if they put a lure in, a lure in lets you play your creatures at instant speed. So it means they can just combo off immediately. So show and tell is a bit risky. So I'd much rather lean on the sneak attack, which is another reason why I kept this hand. Now, our opponent might not be an on Lurin, but I don't know. I've just got the, the vibe that they are. Okay, so we have a Simeon Spirit Guide here. Our opponent can't really play. Okay. Um, I'm just going to crack this now, just in case there's any funny business. We're getting a basic island here anyway, because we have a Makes of the Moon in our deck. So if we need to do something with that, we can. This does mean that we can't sneak attack something in next turn, but we're expecting this game to be a little bit slower. We want to find some sort of protection for our sneak attack if possible. An Ice Fang, sure. Interesting they're casting it at sorcery speed rather than waiting for our turn to play it. Yep, yeah. okay. So they're doing it so they can go into a cantrip. I suspect this Ponder is the card they draw off the top. Otherwise you cast a Ponder first. So that makes sense why they cast it then. Because they had Despair Mana and they didn't have anything else to use it for. They shuffled their library, so that's good for us. I don't want to fire off an end of turn brainstorm here. I'm going to try and get max value with it. So we've definitely got some stuff we would be interested in tucking here. So play this one out. I think we'll cast a brainstorm. Hmm. Interesting choices here. I don't think we want the omniscience. So I think we'll put this on top of our library. And then the situation we're in right now, we can probably afford to get rid of one of our cantrips. Actually, if we put Ponder on top, we can draw the Ponder next turn and hold up Spell Pierce here, which I think is good. I imagine our opponent's probably going to try a Teferi line first, but we have the Spell Pierce to counter a Teferi this turn, if that's what they're going to drop. Green Sun Zenith for one. Sure, I think we let this, this go. Probably, I'm trying to think what it would be, like Noble Hierarch? Yeah, okay, yeah. So they come in and get, this definitely does feel like the Allurian list that uh, I saw earlier. Sure, so this lets them get in for a little bit more damage. So we have a choice of do we want to draw another ponder or do you just want to use these ponders and brainstorms that we already have? I think, we'd, I think we don't necessarily want another ponder right now. I think we just want to try and get the best turn we can get. I don't think we brainstorm this turn, but if we do find the right stuff, we can just go for it. So I think we, we're going to try a brainstorm end of turn, actually. Okay, so a load of stuff that we don't really want. Understood. So we'll put back one of these petals. And then we'll put back another petal and we're going to draw one of them. So now we will cast this Ponder. I'm probably shuffling here, unless... Oh, Grizzlebrand is definitely one of the things we want here. So we'll put Lotus Petal on top. Then I think it's Grizzlebrand. Then I think it's Pyroblast. Because we, we can have multiple layers of protection for trying to go off here. Which I think is the best plan. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Do we need to play out this Lotus Petal? Maybe. We might get in a weird situation... I think we will play it out because if our opponent plays something like a collector roof we can always crack off our lettuce petal to cast our lightning bolt or whatever and save this mana for blue spells or for the blue spell and pyroblast i guess it doesn't really matter actually i think we're in an okay spot a ponder i don't think we pyroblast that we save the pyroblast for either protecting our combo or for um blowing up or like blow, uh, hitting a Teferi, which can allow them to interfere with that combo. There's a Windswept Teeth. I think we will... Taking this two damage does have a very real cost in terms of the amount of cards we can draw with the Grizzlebrand. I think... I'm just trying to think what they can cast. I think we're going to line about this so we can draw seven more cards with our Grizzlebrand next turn and try to put an Emrakul into play. Actually, that's not true because we've got the two life there. That was irrelevant. I forgot that we're going to be playing this Ancient Tomb. Okay, so red, blue, and two. Let's cast a sneak attack. So it's like a force of will. We will. 
Pyroblast this. My opponent does have a lot of mana, so our spell is not looking so good. All right, we got some more stuff going on here. This is Veil of Summer. It is a Veil of Summer. So if we counter spell this Veil of Summer, they'll pay two, and then we'll be left with nothing. If we spell pierce the Force of Will right now, they'll pay. Yeah, I think they've just uh, got us here. Bit unfortunate. We do still have the spell pierce that we can jam if needs be. If I remember rightly, we got a Lotus Petal on top of our library as well. So that's another pretty awful draw to get through. So if they play an Allurin, we do have the mana to spell pierce that now. And they've used their things up on us, hopefully. To Fairy Time Raveler. We cannot spell pierce this to actually achieve anything. Yeah, I think we're probably losing this game. Now, our opponent does have to find something to do. I've only got one card in hand. I don't think... They might, they might just draw a card here. Yeah. And they're going to bash us for two with the Dried Arbor. Getting the... thing. So we could have Spell Pierced here to save two life. I don't think it's worth doing. Because we might be able to clear this at some point. Our Spell Pierce is definitely looking a little bit redundant now. Pell this Lotus Pell they know about. And we'll leave the other one in hand. The chance of us drawing all of our Lotus Petals so that we can cast Grizzle Brand seem very, very low. So we're just on a six turn clock from this Dried Arbor right now, which is fine. Our opponent could just be some sort of just Bant Zenith deck. We haven't seen any of the Allurany type things. So maybe they're not Alluran. Another Grizzle Brand. I think we will cast this guy. So this can trade with a Dried Arbor or it can pressure the Teferi, depending on what our opponent does. Now, they've had some spells in hand they are not been casting, so they could be things like Plow, so they might just Plow our guy. But we don't really need this mana right now. So this suggests to me that our opponent has another threat. So I'm just going to use this to save us some life over the next few turns. Because Teferi's already above two, I don't think we're realistically going to be able to pressure it with the Spirit Guide. But we can at least preserve our life total and get us some more draws into our deck. A Scalding Tarn. Um, we already have enough stuff to put away with the Brainstorm, so I'm going to play this one out for the purposes of having a Brainstorm shuffle effect later on. We're pretty close to hard casting Omniscience. Now, I, I suspect that's probably not going to resolve in the face of our opponent's grip of cards that hasn't gone anywhere for a while. Okay, I think it's going to get in for one. Sure, so the clock's been halved. Our opponent is holding up a Force of Will. So what we cast is unlikely to resolve. But I hope you'll see a bit more of our opponent's deck here. So this one I think we keep in our hand for now. Because this is just something else we can shuffle over the brainstorm when the time comes. If we can find two more Lotus spells, we can hard cast a Grizzle Brand. That doesn't seem like a great strategy. In the face of the very obviously broadcasted uh, Force of Will they got sat over there. If our opponent is alluring, they might just not want to show us the stuff until they can go off and win the game with it. Or until they have to win the game with it. Okay, so we've got some action here. Windswept Heath being cracked. And a Flooded Strand. Haven't seen any sort of like... Uro or anything from them either. This feels like an Alluran. Natural order. Okay. So maybe we're not on Alluran here. But they are trying to resolve a four mana um, spell. Okay. So we're going to have to get pretty lucky here. Show and tell. Into Grizzle Brand. Draw some cards. Blue. Blue. And one. Let's try the show and tell off. If they've got a force of will, we're just dead here. It's going to be very difficult for us, for us to win even if the show and tell resolves. But we at least have a chance. Because we can draw seven cards, possibly find enough mana to do something. Okay, they got force here. What do they pitch? Flusterstorm. Okay, so we got a nice bit of information at the end. They brought in Flusterstorm. Sure. So our opponent is a natural ordery deck instead. So I think we're going to want these Veil of Summers. And I think we would like that over the... Hmm. They're kind of doing a similar thing to Spell Pierce a lot of the time. Can drop out this preordain maybe a ponder here let's try this i still don't like having these force of wills in the deck necessarily for this matchup i think we're the person that's supposed to go under and have a few little one-off to hit our opponent with um we've got our lands we've got a couple of cantrips it's a bit slow but i think it's fine we use our misty rainforest to get a basic island and cast ponder and then we can fix our hand with brainstorm fetch hand next time carpet of flowers is good I like carpet flowers here. Uh, I don't think we want the omniscience though. Or do we? We definitely want the ponder. The carpet on top here. Shuffle your library. No. 
So we can brainstorm, maybe take the omniscience, and then play the carpet. Then crack our fetch down, play the carpet. And then we can go to our second main phase and then play the ponder. The carpet also potentially gives us four black mana at some point for a Grizzlebrand. But now we know what our opponent's doing. We've got a, a little bit of a, better of a shot. Now they may not be a lure in, but they have kind of similar things where they can have some cards in hand that don't do anything on their own. And they're trying to resolve a four mana green spell. Okay. So, do we want the Omniscience on top of our library? I think we're going to cast a Brainstorm rather than Crack first. Two Omniscience. Okay, we don't need two Omniscience. So one of these can go back. And I don't think we need the Fiery Islet here. We'll play this one out. We'll crack this. Going to get Tropical Island. Play this Carpet of Flowers. Go to our next main phase. We'll add blue. And cast this Ponder. Show and tell. That seems like a good one that we want. And... We don't need this Misty Rainforest. Let's show and tell on top. And then the Spell Pierce. Draw this. We can also just drop the Magus of the Moon first and try and mess with our opponent that way. Now it will shut off our Carpet of Flowers though. So we'll see what our opponent does with this turn. But we can, if we can resolve our Omniscience with one piece of protection, then I quite like our chances here. Because we can put in the Grizzle Brand and the Magus, draw a bunch of cards, probably find an Emrakul, win the game. We've got a significant mana advantage over our opponent as well. A wasteland, sure. Okay. Does that change things? Um, so I think we say yes here and we add red mana. And we play this. This does mean that we can't really spell pierce if we play this Magus of the Moon, but our opponent doesn't. Actually, that's not true. We have the Carpet of Flowers. All right. Let's see if we can get our opponent with a Magus here. So our opponent. If they find a, a blue land, we'll get carpet mana. If they don't, then they don't get to play magic. So we can sit here with a spell pierce for a while, punish our opponent's greedy mana base, play a mountain of our own. So we can cast a show and tell here, but we don't really need to, I don't think. Not just yet. I'd like to do it with a spell pierce backup. Feels like our opponent's got a force of will. If we can put an omniscience into play, I think we are fine. But we, we have a win condition here, a sneak attack, interesting. We need to watch our clock a little bit, but we should be able to reach the conclusion of this game, I would imagine. So if we find another land, we can try and play a sneak attack. If we find two lands, we can play sneak attack with spell pierce up. My opponent is just absolutely windmilled out of the game by this makes at the moment, which is why I brought it in. Scalding Tarn, excellent. I think we're just going to hold up the spell pierce, because our opponent's missing land drops a lot anyway, so if they do find anything, they're going to struggle to resolve. And I have to imagine that Force of Will is in their hand right now anyway. Just going to have a miserable game of Magus of the Moon ruining their day. As is tradition you know, when someone puts Magus of the Moon into play. Another spell push. We've got seven cards now. We don't need to play the sneak attack right now. We can wait another turn. I put this into play, leaving up our spell push. They could have a force of will here. That's put them into a three turn clock from our guy. And we've still got the spell push. I'm not going to fight over that because we're in a commanding position. I'd rather fight over the thing that stops us just winning the game with this Magus of the Moon. Oh, they found a basic forest, so they get to play magic again. A green sun zenith for one. We spell pierce this because this gives them mana. And if they force a will this, then we can just show and tell omniscience because they're not going to have a lot of cards in hand. And we hold the spell pierce, we can do the same play next turn if we want to. Um, let's attack first. Right, we don't need to put anything in here. I don't want to use my blue mana for a show and tell when we've just got a two turn clock here and protection for our guy. Maybe it's the slightly cowardly way of doing it, but I think it's just the highest upside for us. Put a sneak attack in the play using all our mountains. See, again, we'd have to take ourselves off of our blue source in order to protect this. Okay, our opponent's gone to one. So they can't force of will anything next turn. If we'd have had another mana, then maybe we fight over that and use and then put the grizzle brand in. But I think we're just fine with this guy beating down. Yeah. Uh, a victory brought to you by Omegas of the Moon. Sure. Like, even if they break out of this somehow, I think we have it relatively well covered. We've got more cards in hand than our opponent. We've got double show and tells to force through an Omniscience. And Omniscience grizz around is just lights out. So we're 3-0. Let's go on to round 4. Well, this is an interesting hand. Um, we're on the play. If our Brainstorm doesn't find lands, then we're completely screwed. I think we're going to keep it and believe in the heart of the cards. So our opponent is Max Stortion who quite often plays uh, Doomsday used to be his deck, but I don't know what he's on nowadays. 
Our hand is reasonable against Doomsday. So we can brainstorm and hide. If they thought sees us, we've got force of will. There's a polluted delta. Oh no, we're getting uh, opposition agent into here. No, we're not. Okay, they're just playing around us having a stifle. So I think we have to get a volcanic here. Are we casting this brainstorm end of turn? I think we are. Okay, we found a land. That's that's good news. That's very much step one of what I wanted. I don't think we're I don't think we're sneak attacking. If they're on reanimated, though, we might want the sneak attack as a thing. But what else are we going to put back here? I guess we put back sneak attack and a preordain. We draw the preordain, cast a ponder. I think we crack this. We're just looking for mana, really. Get ourselves volcanic, cast this ponder, leave open our spell pierce. City traitors, ponder. These things are kind of where I want to be. So. Put Mr. Rainforest on the bottom, then the Ponder, then the City Traitors. This means that we'll have the blue card of the Ponder as an additional blue card. So we'll have two pieces of protection to put our Emrakul into play next turn. Brainstorm from our opponent. Yeah, okay, this definitely feels like Doomsday. Generally, an end of turn brainstorm like that usually means combo deck. Okay, what do we got here? A Tundra. Okay, it could be Breakfast. Stoneforge Mystic. We don't really care about Stoneforge Mystic. Okay, this looks more like Breakfast now. Batter skull, sure. Pop up there. Over to us. So we've got an additional blue card there if we need it. One, two, and a blue. Let's play show and tell with spell pierce and force of will backup. What do they exile? A brainstorm. They could put their bat skull in, but that's not going to really work. Nomads in core. Understood. Understood opponent. We do have force of will backup though. So if they have Cephalid Illusionist, as long as they don't have a cavern. We can force a bullet. Okay, they didn't have it. Excellent. So, this is a matchup where Sage Extraction has some pretty useful text. So does Pyroblast. Solga Lantern, also pretty good here. Veil of Summer, Carpet Flowers, these will have text. Lightning Bolt, killing their guys, these will have text. Even Mages of the Moon has a little bit of wiggle room here because it shuts off their um, Urza Sagas. So these are all things we want, potentially. We don't need a daze here. Again, I don't think we're on the the force of will plan here. But maybe we are because they can combo just as quickly as us. So maybe it's a bit risky to not do that. So we're going to board out one of our apes for the carpet flowers. Over here, just wondering how many in and out. Um, probably get rid of a couple of preordain. This is a case of we don't want to get rid of too many cards and just fundamentally change how our deck operates. One, two, three, four. So if we get four cards, what are the best four cards here? I think... Free Pyroblast and the Carpet of Flowers. These are the things we want. I think we also want the Veil of Summers. We kind of need to keep our combo pieces in here. Uh, I don't actually think the Spell Pierce is very good. The Spell Pierce can come out for Veils. That's what we're looking at here. So these six cards. We do need to have our Graveyard Hate and stuff for this matchup. It's kind of what it's there for. But how are we supposed to trim down? Honestly, I do think we are supposed to get rid of Force of Wills. Potentially mad as that sounds. So we get these in and we can get in a Lightning Bolt which can kill an Illusionist or whatever. I think that's fine. Maybe we should have the Force of Wills over the Veil on the draw. So maybe we've got it the wrong way around and we should have Force of Wills in and Veils out. Okay, so we have a little bit of protection here. We can show and tell our guy in. We'll keep this. Underground C. We have to watch out for potential opposition agent here though. I think we'll play out this Scalding Tarn so we can get a Pyroblast going when we need it. We kind of want our opponents to tap out so that we can play our bits and pieces. All right, we'll let this one go through. So we do want to crack this at some point. Cephalid Illusionist. Let's crack this. Let's get Volcanic Island. Let's Pyroblast this. All righty then. Omniscience, you say. Let's cast a Brainstorm. Wowzers, trousers, this hand's good. Uh, we need more land is the issue though. So... Omniscient's Emrakul is like lights out. So I don't think we need the Grizzle Brand here. Put away the Grizzle Brand and put away the Soul Guide Lantern here. And then we'll crack this now while we're playing around Opposition Agent. In our opponent's draw step, we're going to surgically extract this separate Illusionist. So I think we just... Do we want a Tropical Island here? Maybe we want a Tropical Island. Maybe we'll get a Tropical Island. So in our opponent's draw step, we will surgically extract this. If they counter it, we can surgically extract it again. So our opponent's going to have to be on the fair plan. And I think what we have beats the fair plan. Especially as we get two bites of the cherry with show and tail. We do need to find another land. A brainstorm. Sure. So this might just be hiding the Cephalid Illusionist. Uh, so they don't get 
a card stripped out of their hand, or they might be looking for an answer for our surgical. Flusterstorm is something they probably have access to here, but we do have the second surgical to really nail the coffin shut there. Just going to be a misstep, a flusterstorm. So there's a flusterstorm we mentioned. So we're going to go on the same thing. No pay, no pay. This doesn't do anything, this doesn't do anything. And then we'll try and hit their illusionist again. Okay, they got force of will as well here. So the cephalid illusionist entering the exile zone. Sure. So this means if we draw a land, we are probably a go because they've had to use all their protection here. Nomads in core, probably for a white mana, yeah. Land, we drew a land, excellent. This should probably be game. Yeah, there we go, we've got the concession. So that was another really quick one as well. Um, this deck feels pretty streamlined and smooth and we're 4-0 in very quick time here. So let's plow on to the final round, which is a trophy match. All right, we're in the trophy match now. This is our opening hand. We have sneak attack the mana to cast it. We don't have a monster to put in, but we do have a ponder to find it. But we may have to pitch that ponder into a force of will, depending on what our opponent's doing. But at least it's a nice little valve we have to sort of release the pressure. I think we do keep this. We're on the draw, so we do get to see another card. So maybe we can find another cantrip or a different blue card. We don't really know what our opponent's playing. A scalding tarn. Okay, is this going to be Delver? A crack it immediately for something. Preordain. Okay, I think we might be on a mirror here. In which case... This is going to get a bit weird. Okay, so I think we are pondering here. We need to find a creature to put in. Okay, so we have a creature to put in. And we have a whole bunch of mats. So I think we put this on top and this. Now, opponent could be any sort of deck, to be fair. I don't, I'm just assuming they're at the mirror because I've just seen the cards they're playing and the cards we're playing. And it's not completely out of the realms of possibility that it's a mirror. All right, this deck has just won a challenge, so people are going to be trying it out. Okay, so we can play a sneak attack and activate it right now, but it might not resolve. Let's play this Lotus Petal out. Let's play this Lotus Petal out. I think we do do it now because if it, if it works, then we're home and dry, really. Let's try it. If it doesn't, we can do the same play next turn. A daze. Sure. Um, do I want to pay one for this? I think we will, yes. Okay, so we don't have anything to put in this turn. So we get hit by a Wasteland. But usually preordain, you don't see it in the Wastelandy type decks. Sure. A Ponder. So if they pass, play a Sneak Attack, we get to put our Grizzle Brand in. But if they... Okay, they're conceding. A little bit premature in my opinion, but fair enough. So, in the mirror, what are we supposed to do? That is a reasonably good question. <laughs> um... Veil of Summer seems good here. Hydroblast seems good here. Pyroblast seems good here. So we're trying to cast Show and Tell, putting in Omniscience, is what we're trying to do. I think uh, we can get rid of a Spirit Guide for a carpet. That's a trade we do quite often. And we're looking for a very specific combo here, really. We're either, we're either looking for Sneak Attack or Show and Tell Omniscience Emrakul. So I reckon we get rid of those two Preordains, get rid of this Daze. Still leaves us looking for three cards. Tough, tough choices here. I don't think we can mess with our core engine. Is it, in, is it ridiculous that I'm tempted to board out Force of Worlds again? Is that really what we're doing here? I'm, all, I'm even thinking about Preordains and Magus of the Moon as options. Because if they don't fetch their basic from me off, we can get them off of Show and Tell. I think we'll submit like this with the one Force of Will. Caveat, I am nowhere near remotely being close to even be an expert with this deck. So we have a lot of cantrips here. We have a Hydroblast for their sneak attack, which is one of the better things they can do. So we'll keep this. They're on the play, so I suspect they are favored. A Ponder, sure. And the Lotus Petal. So we have a choice on turn one, whether we Ponder or we just hold up Pyroblast, Hydroblast. I think we just hold up the Blast. And then next turn we can Ponder with our basic island. We are pretty immune to Blood Moon because we draw on our island. All right, a Brainstorm, sure. Now, we could be hitting these cantrips, but there's two things we care about, and that's show and tell and sneak attack. What do we draw here? This is actually a pretty good draw for us. because It means we can ponder and then play the Lotus Petal and hold up both blasts. Like, we do need some lands at some point, right? So, I guess we're keeping these and we can use them to fix a Brainstorm as well for next turn. A preordain, sure. The fact that we uh, managed to win the first game feels pretty big. Okay, here is a show and tell. We will target it with a Pirate Blast. 
I have to imagine this means omniscience from our opponent. Because you don't cast this in this matchup unless it's the omniscience. So I think we are in brainstorm territory here. Not really doing anything for us. So our opponents should be putting in the omniscience and then casting the emerald call. Because you don't cast this in this matchup unless you can do that. We'll put in a sneak attack. Oh, they just put in the emerald call. That's a huge mistake in my opinion. Like it might pay off for them, but... Okay, so we crack this first for a volcanic. And we cast uh, probably ponder first, I think. Uh, we have a Grizzle Brand. Okay, so we will put this on top. Put this on top. This on top. Sheffield Library, no. We will put this Grizzle Brand in. And we're going to draw some cards. We're going to draw some more cards. Then we're going to activate Sneak Attack. Put in our Emrakul. Go to attacks. All right, let's got it. We managed to win the league and get the trophy there. Our opponent, I think, misplayed quite badly there. I don't think you can cast Sneak Attack in the mirror... Uh, sorry, it's cast Show and Tell in the mirror, unless you have Omniscience. If you have Omniscience, Grizzle Brand, then you can draw enough cards to then play the Emrakul. If you have Omniscience, Emrakul, that's fine. But you can't cast Show and Tell like that. I just think that's so responsible. They basically gave us the win there. We, we can't win that game unless they... Sh well, we might be able to win that game, I guess. But we can't win the game on that turn unless they Show and Tell. All right, let's have a little chat about the deck. So this deck felt... Well, obviously, scoreboard, right? We Let's have a quick look at how our matches went. So 2-0, 2-0, 2-1, 2-0, 2-1. So we didn't drop that many games at all. And we smashed through with a nice 5-0, which is always good to get on the channel. This felt more streamlined than the last one I played. Now, it's important to note why this is different. So I think the last time I played Sneak and Show, it was while Initiative was still legal. And that meant that your life total was really pressured. So people were trying to play a Traxxer instead of Grizzlebrand. Because it can dig you into, you know, a sneak attack as an enchantment, a lotus petal as an artifact, a creature of one of your big monsters to put in, or an enchantment with omniscience, and then it can find you a force of will, and a ponder, or a show and tell, etc, etc. So the idea was that you can look at 10, get the good ones, and you don't have to pay a load of life for it. But now that White Plume Adventure has been banned, initiative's kind of fallen off, which means that you can afford to pay all that life into a grizzle brand, and it's probably going to be good enough, as we saw today. So that's why this is looking more like the older builds of Sneak and Show rather than what was sort of the response from the initiative. Because obviously the initiative pushed this deck out a lot, but then people were trying to get there with the tracks. But now that that's not a thing with the initiative, you can just sort of play this older build, which I think is, as we've seen, is pretty effective. It just won a challenge. And in the hands of me, who is very much a novice at Sneak and Show, I just smashed through a league. So... We did have a little bit of luck here and there. You can't 5 our league without some luck. I'm not going to deny that. But I think the deck is very solid. We managed to get a Magus of the Moon win. We boarded out Force of Wills a lot for simple permission because we have access to so many mana and little units of mana in the form of Lotus Petals and Sim and Spirit Guides. It's quite easy for us to protect ourselves with a Pyroblast or a Hydroblast. Whereas if it's Force of Will, that requires us to have more cards to protect ourselves. And the problem with needing more cards is that it's taking away from the things you're going to put in or it's taking away from your things that are finding other things. Whereas I quite like just being able to trade one for one. Now, if we're playing against Storm or Oops or Spells, then we're going to be very grateful for these Force of Wills. But they came out in a lot of matchups where that's not really a thing we needed to. We were sort of either similar speed to our opponents or a little bit faster. Now, we did get some matchups that were quite favourable. I think Burn was quite a good one to have for us. That was sort of... Um, a very easy matchup for this particular deck, which was always good to see. But yeah, I'm quite happy with how I played this one today. And I think that's my sideboarding, boarding out the Force of Wills made sense. And I boarded in Megs of Moon in some good spots, including one that won us a game. So yeah, all, all in all, a pretty good one. And I think you can all see why this won the challenge. I suspect this deck will be more popular now, especially since... Painter decks are really good at the moment. So Painter decks are one of the things that had the power level to keep up with the initiative. So you had Mono Blue Painter and Mono Red Painter that were both viable decks. And probably probably in the top five deck slots, uh, Painter as a combo is probably like four, fourth or fifth best deck. I think whilst the initiative was around, it was Delver Initiative, Cephala Breakfast, then Painter probably. That's probably how I would have rated the decks. Now things are twisted around a bit and this deck just farm painter quite easily because they can't mill you because of Emrakul and their fair game is just so much slower and weaker than 
sneak attack, show a tell, put massive things in, etc, etc. So, yeah, a trophy in the bank. Pretty happy with this one. I hope you enjoyed see seeing this uh, showcase winning... Uh, sorry, not showcase. Um, legacy challenge winning deck list. And, yeah, <laughs> not much more to say about that. All right, if you're still here, hit that like button. Drop me a comment. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you want to see on the channel. I'm always happy for suggestions. Worst I can do is say no. And subscribe. I really need subscribers, so please hit that subscribe button. And if you know anyone who's interested in Legacy, whether that's online and like Reddit or your Discord or whatever, send them my link. That really helps. Um, I think we are done now. So thank you very much for watching and goodbye.